you must stay at home. Coronavirus. The second wave of coronavirus. coronavirus. Stay at home. You're you. killing people. I'm not Go I'm paying for what you're... Over the past few months, the UK has faced huge challenges, not only to public health, but also to our rights and freedoms. The Coronavirus Act was brought in to help the UK face the threat of the pandemic. But many of the powers within the Act are extreme, unexplained and simply unjustified. It gives us the power to fight the virus with everything that we've got. Parliament now has the chance to repeal the Act, and this is what they must do. When the Act was passed in March, Parliamentarians were rightly cautious about the extent of its powers. We ought not to allow this situation to endure one moment longer than is absolutely necessary. To let us make sure that not one single provision in this bill is in place for a minute longer than it has to be. I for one will never rest until the day, hopefully not too far away, when I can come to this house to vote to get rid of this bill. The time for that vote is now. The Act contains some of the most extreme detention powers in modern legal history. Police and public health officials can detain anyone, including children, who are potentially infectious and forcibly take biological samples. In a pandemic, potentially infectious could mean anyone. This power has never been used lawfully. Over 120 innocent people have been wrongly prosecuted. We must be vigilant against wrongful convictions as was highlighted in the case in Oxford of 18-year-old Lewis Brown, who was wrongfully prosecuted recently under, strangely enough, Welsh powers in the Coronavirus Act. There should be zero cases where members of the public have been charged with something that was not an offence under law. Zero. There are serious failings that have punished innocent people, let alone undermined public trust in authorities and the rule of law. The Act also allows ministers to cancel events, close premises and even ban protests. These are breathtaking executive powers. Already, ministers have made temporary regulations that prohibit protests, but the Coronavirus Act can keep these powers at the government's fingertips for years. Under the Act, all local elections and all police and crime commissioner elections have been postponed for a year. This includes elections in 118 metropolitan, district and unitary authority council areas. This represents huge swathes of the country where democracy has been paused. The right to elect representatives is our most fundamental right in a democracy. With the majority of premises now able to open, the postponement of democracy cannot be allowed to continue. It is a long established principle that emergency powers should carry emergency time limits. But instead, the government wants this act to last for at least two years. We campaigned for, and won, the right for MPs to vote on the act every six months. The first vote is approaching this September. This is a crossroads for our country. Will we start to gain back what we have lost? Or will this draconian power grab continue?